Bar Italia was opened in uh, the winter of 1949 um, by my grandparents, Lou and Caterina. And um, they obviously, uh, they had a cafe in the Long Acre, which was uh, for the market store people in Covent Garden. And that was a, a real, you know, a spit and sawdust kind of cafe. It used to start at two in the morning, serving all the, uh, serve, ser serving all the people serving all the people from uh, the markets and uh, then they saw an opportunity to open a, um, a, a, an Italian cafe in Frith Street and uh, they didn't have the money to do it which was a, a shame and uh, they managed to, and they managed to borrow 50 pound off of an Iceman that they knew very well okay. which gave them the opportunity to open Bar Italia. Okay. Where did they come from in Italy? Um, from Piacenza which okay. is just uh, Kind of south of Milan, uh, Provincia di Emilia Romagna. Yeah. And was there a lot of Italians here in London when they arrived? And loads. This was really, this whole area was an Italian quarter. Okay, so this is why they wanted to open it. Yeah, and I think obviously good coffee was hard to find. Uh, we had one of the first gadget coffee machines in London here, and uh, it played its part not only as a cafe but as a social centre. Because if you can imagine in 1949 and 50s communications were very scarce sure. which meant that you know uh, people got uh, information by word of mouth telephones were really hard to use there was no uh, you know it, 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 so Barry Taylor played its part in that social center mm -hmm. people used to come there um, to find employment which right. was very hard for Italians so in the restaurant game if you're looking for a job where did you go you went to Bar Italia okay. if you wanted to hear news about your family if someone was ill if someone was dying if someone had been born you know you'd go to Bar Italia and someone would have a message for you mm -hmm. if you wanted to hear the football results on a Sunday La Domenica Sportiva where would you go you'd go to Bar Italia okay. so that's why it played its part where we're sitting now was part of Bianchi's restaurant sure. the, the famous Bianchi's yeah. restaurant which was owned by Lino Ricci and where Elena Salvoni had the upstairs floor, which we're looking into now. Right, yeah. And she had some really, really top class customers here. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, Hen restaurant, well, Ella Fitzgerald. Yeah. Um, Henry Kissinger used to come here. Yeah. Maria Callas came up here but wouldn't leave her mink coat in case it got stolen. Really? Yeah, it's hilarious. So, but she had she had um, original Boson K after the news at ten. Okay. They used to come up here and have a drink. Yeah. And uh, you know, so this was this was a very famous a restaurant in itself, but Soho was uh, notoriously Italian. Yeah, and was it difficult for Italians? Because just after the Second World War, the Italians weren't kind of completely liked by the British. Like, yeah. um, there was a big stronghold in Clerkenwell, and we and the Italians stuck together. You know, when we were in Bar Italia just now, there's a picture in there that I bought, and it's of this outside here of um, two guys up a ladder taking down uh, yeah, Italian. Yeah, yeah beautiful. Which is a real poignant shot because they were scared, <coughs> excuse me, of hostilities against Italians in London. Mm. So anything to do with Italians was taken down, mm. and you know, in, in case the windows were smashed or any hostilities. Yeah. How how much has Bar Italia changed in the way it looks now and the way it looks it looked in 1949, 1950, Not at all. Not at all. No, not at all. Okay. Um, if you see photos of Bar Italia when it was opened in 49, it's very, virtually the same. The terrazzo floors have millions of people walking across it. Okay, it's worn in parts, <laughs> but that's that's kind of natural. But um, it's that floor was laid by my uncle Torino. The bar is completely original. The the red and white formica is exactly the same as it was in 1949. The floor is exactly the same. So really, um, the main features of the the bar um, are, are still really there. Um, I've, the picture of Marciano. That's an important thing, yeah. the picture of Marciano. Well, what happened was um, my father befriended Rocky Marciano when he came to London. Okay. And... Um, what year was that uh, I think it was in the, uh, I think it was in the 60s. Okay. And Rocky Marciano was fed up of eating hotel food and he befriended my father. And he went up to my nonna's house, who um, we mentioned, and he wanted to eat two things. He wanted to eat risotto and he wanted to eat polenta. Okay. And she promised to make them for him and she okay. made them for him okay. and he came up with his wife Barbara and his daughter Marianne and he had a bit of homemade wine went to sleep in the back bedroom and then he took us as a family to a place called Thatch Barn in Boreham Wood and he had a showreel a film of his fight uh, I think it was against Joe Walcott and you know um, we, we were all taken and we, he, he talked us through the fight but the poster came about because when he died his wife 
Barbara sent it over as a thank you uh, uh, and a token of our friendship. And uh, that poster has been in there, I think it was placed in there in about 1969. And it has not moved. Football plays a big part in the Borough Town, doesn't it? You've got the TV there, you've been in games from Italy, in fact, you show the World Cup there. Wasn't Tim saying in the A2 final? Oh, yeah. Well, we didn't have the big screen. We only had a, one of those big whopping TVs, you know, yeah. with, a, with a back was really, really wide. And it was on a plank of wood. And uh, there we are in the final. Bar <coughs> is full to the rafters. No air conditioning in Bar Italia, you can just imagine. So it was hot and humid. Mm. So this, the game starts and everybody's screaming and shouting and we're all enjoying it. Italy are winning. All of a sudden now the television goes off. The humidity's got to the TV, and it's gone off. Everybody started screaming and shouting, but not at the TV. Yeah, they started yeah. at me, at me. I'm standing there with my white apron on, working away, and they want to kill me, right? So I, 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 I was in a quandary. What do I do? How do I get there? You know, they all started screaming, trying to run out of the place to go and find another pub or place to watch the game. Anyway, I come into Bianchi's restaurant. And Mr. Ritchie uh, kindly gives me his TV. So we get it down three floors, right. stick it back in Bar Italia, yeah. plug it in, and yeah. wow, it's all back on again yeah, now. Right. And we stayed there for the final. And, um, yeah. you know, it was a, a memorable day. Italy won. Yeah. Well, that whole street just goes crazy. Yeah, yeah, it really does. On the last World Cup that we won, it was even bigger than we expected. It was massive. And yeah. uh, um, I, I think there was about 6,000 people outside the front. We didn't have one incident of any... Um, uh, bad behaviour. Yeah, yeah. Everybody was here, uh, enjoying the game, enjoying the atmosphere. Didn't matter what side you were on, yeah. and uh, it made the front page of the Evening Standard because mm -hmm. uh, it was just an iconic night. Mm -hmm. And I, I always remember that we didn't have anything to re rejoice with, so we got all the pasta from the kitchen and we started throwing them out the windows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the chef came in the next day, and all the pasta had gone, <laughs> all the reserves. But we were spraying prosecco and 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 throwing pasta like confetti yeah. out the windows, yeah. and it was just um, it was a that those things I've experienced, I hope to, you know, one day that my family and my brother's children can experience them as well.